This tutorial will cover creating visual effects and sound effects as feedback for your player to make your game a juicier experience. For this demo, I'm going to start with uh, one of the standard asset packs from Unity. The one that I'm using is uh, under Assets, Import Package, Particle Systems. You could create all of your particle systems from scratch if you wanted to, and uh, my other tutorial on particle systems will show you how to create them completely from scratch. But if you don't want to build them completely from scratch, you can start with some of the built-in ones that Unity has just to make that process a little bit easier. Uh, I'm also going to be getting some sound effects to use for this. And there are a lot of great resources for getting free sound effects. I like freesound.org. Uh, they have a lot of great options and all of them are free. So if you want to add some free sounds to your game, that's a good way to go. I have selected a chime sound effect that I'm going to use for this demo. And so now it's time to attach our sound effect to an object and to create some visual effects to go along with it. So in my scene, I'm going to create an empty game object. And this is going to be my effect that's going to play. So I'm going to call this effect and I'm going to add a couple of components to it. I'm first going to add an audio source and I'm going to use my chime sound effect for that. And I'm gonna leave this set to play on awake. So it's going to play as the first thing that happens. Then I'm going to add a second component. And this one is going to be a particle system so I am going to be creating this particle system somewhat from scratch, but I'm going to use some of the, uh, the built-in things that they have in Unity for their particle, uh, particle systems uh, standard assets. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the, the purple squares. And so that's down under the renderer tab. Under the renderer tab, we have a material slot and if you click the circle next to that, you can select from the materials. These are all materials that came from the standard asset pack that we imported. So we have a few options that might look good for this. Uh, you can try a few different ones and see what you want your particular effect to look like. So I'm going to use the firework particle. And the first thing I want to do is think about what is this effect going to mean? When is it going to play? And for this demo, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have an object in the scene, and when I click on it, I'm going to collect that object, and then this effect will play to let the player know that they've done something correct. So this is basically going to be a pickup effect. So uh, the next thing I wanna change, since this is going to be a pickup effect, is I want it to be sort of a quick burst, and I want it to go maybe up in the air first and then come back down. So I'm going to change the start speed to zero. And now you can see that it's sort of all centralized around in this middle area. Uh, I'm going to change the gravity modifier to one so that they'll fall back down. And actually, back to the start speed, uh, let's set that to 2. And so what we want is we want it to go upwards first and then come back down. Uh, so the reason why it's going straight forward in this direction is because of the shape of the emission, which right now is set to cone. And you can tell which way the cone is facing. That's the direction it's trying to push the particles. So let's change this to a sphere and now they're sort of going in just random directions initially and then falling down. Uh, I'm also going to, I'm having a little bit of frame rate issues since I'm running the uh, video recording software at the same time and that's why the particles are running kind of slowly. Uh, so I'm going to set a max particles. Uh, this helps when you are running on a lower end type of hardware in particular uh, so if you were using for mobile, you would definitely want to set a max particles cap. Uh, so I think 
50 is probably a good max particles. I also want to change how long uh, the particle effects live for. Uh, so the duration is how long does this particle effect keep running? And right now it's running forever because it's also set to looping. So this 5 isn't really doing a whole lot right now. But if we turned off looping and then we hit simulate, we can see it will run for five seconds and then it stops. So looping causes it to run continuously no matter what this duration is. The lifetime is how long each particle itself actually survives before it disappears. And so right now they're falling for a pretty long way before they die. So if we set this to one, we can now see that the particles are dying much quicker. Uh, for something that is a very quick piece of feedback for the player, you want a pretty short uh, particle effect to play. You don't want it to play for very long because you want it to be a quick uh, bit of information for the player. So I'm going to set the start lifetime to 7. Uh, eventually, or sorry, 0.7. Um, eventually we will want to turn off looping. Uh, but while we're still messing around and creating the particle effect, it's helpful to see it looping so we don't have to keep hitting simulate every time we want to watch it. So I'm going to leave that looping for now, but we will come back and turn that off. So the next thing I want to do is under the emission tab, uh, we are going to change this to a burst. So down here in the second half we have bursts, and I'm going to add one to the burst. And it automatically says that it will play when time is zero. Uh, and then it has a min and max of 30 particles. So if you watch here, you can see when that's happening. So now that we have a burst, we don't really need them playing continuously over time. So I'm going to set rate over time to zero. And since our duration is five, uh, what's going to happen is it waits until for five seconds. And then it, when it starts, it plays the burst and then it waits for that five seconds to complete. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to one so we can see that a little bit more <coughs> regularly. And again, we're going to be turning off looping, so this won't really matter uh, once we get to that stage. Uh, so I'm also going to change the color. And when you're changing the color, you can either change the start color, what the color defaults has, or you can change the color over lifetime. Color over lifetime is a gradient as time goes by, the color of that particle changes and goes along the gradient. That color over lifetime, whatever is in there, adds on to whatever is the start color. So if you want the color over lifetime to fully control it, you want to keep the start color set to zero. However, if you want to get some nice randomness in there, you could have uh, start with a oops, uh, random uh, between two colors. And so we could do maybe a red and a blue. So now we have a little bit of variation in that start color. And I'm going to reduce this, um, the amount that's coming out in these bursts. I'm going to change the min and the max to 20. So there's just a little bit less particles going on. Uh, and then I'm going to use this color over lifetime. And the first thing that I like to do with color over lifetime is uh, the top uh, tags are for alpha. And you can, what you can do is you can start the beginning alpha at zero. So they don't pop into existence, they fade in. Uh, and then you can uh, you can drag these around, and you can also add new ones by clicking anywhere in this space up here. And so you can also have them an end at alpha zero. So they fade in, and then they fade out. And I, I want them going a bit more up at the beginning. Uh, so one thing we can do with that is under velocity over lifetime. So just like color over lifetime, the velocity over lifetime is how does it change as it progresses through its lifespan. Uh, so let's try just adding uh, to our y value. All right, so now they start going up. Let's 
try four. Uh, and then you can also change this from the drop down. You can change this to a curve. And if you select down here at the bottom, there's this, uh, you can double click on this uh, to pop it open. This lets you edit the curve that you see up here. So there's one for each, the X, Y, and Z. And if you click on them, they turn gray, so they're no longer being edited. They're still affecting the particle system. They're just not being edited in this curve editor right now. So if we look at the Y, uh, I want to have it start with a lot of up, upward motion. Uh, but then I want that to peter off towards the end uh, so that it is uh, that it pops up at the beginning and then falls down. You can also make this, you can see right now there, there's a lot of uniformity going on in my particle system. They all have really similar behavior. Uh, and if you want to get a little bit more variation with that, uh, you can change this velocity over lifetime to a curve uh, to uh, random between two curves. And once again, we'll turn off the X and the Z so that we're not editing those. And now we can get a little bit more interesting variation. In fact, I'm going to make this number a little bit larger here. I'm going to say seven is the highest. And then change my lower one at the end. So now there's a little bit more randomness in how they're moving. You can also randomize their start speed, the, which also helps to give more randomness to their movement. Uh, so instead of just a constant, we can have a random between two constants. And we could do 2 to 5. And you can also change the lifetime to be random, which also helps with... Uh, so right now, they're all fading in and out at the exact same rate. So we can change this uh, start lifetime to also random between two constants, and I'm going to do 0.7 to 1.2. All right, so now we have a little bit more variation going on in there. And if you want to see what we have so far, let's turn off looping. And now we can hit play to test the particle effect and sound effect playing together. Cool. So now we need a time and place to play this effect. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make this effect into a resource so that I can load it in uh, based on what's happening in the game. So to do that, we create a folder called resources. It must be called resources, it must be spelled correctly, and it must have a capital R in order for this to work correctly. The resources folder is loaded into the game uh, when you make a build, no matter whether anything in it is used in a scene. Normally, Unity will attempt to not include things in the build if the things in the folders are not actually used in the scenes themselves. Uh, but the resources folder is always included in the build. It just must be spelled correctly so that Uni Unity can find it. So you can take this effect game object and drag it into the resources folder, and it will make a resources prefab. Uh, so this now can be loaded into the scene uh, from a script. So we can delete the effect that we have in the scene. We don't need this one anymore. We're going to be loading this one into the game. And to load it in, what we're going to do is make a game object. I'm just going to use a, a cube for now. And uh, I'm going to put actually a couple of cubes around so that we can see them see multiple instances of this happening. And now we need a script that is going to allow us to pick these objects up. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. And I'm going to call it Pickup. 
Now I'm going to be doing this with uh, on mouse down for clicking on the cubes, but you could also do this if you had a character controller, you could use on trigger enter to detect when you've collided with something. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you can use this, but just for this demo, just to show you how to actually load the effect, I'm going to use it for on mouse click. So we're going to attach our script to these cubes. You just drag the script down to the bottom where it says add component and it attaches the script. And then we'll open these up, this script up in mono develop so that we can add the function to load the effect into the scene. For what we're doing, we don't need an update function or a start function. So I'm going to go ahead and start by removing those. And the function we are going to use is on mouse down. It needs capital O for on, capital M for mouse, and capital D for down. And it needs to open curly bracket and a close curly bracket. Now inside of this function, so when we call on mouse down, what I want to do is destroy the cube so this script is attached to the cube, so what we do is destroy game object, and this game object is referring to whatever game object the script is attached to. So destroy game object will destroy the cube. And we can start by testing that out just to make sure that that works. So now when I click on a cube, it disappears. I just realized I laid my cubes out uh, not in line with the camera. So let's go ahead and spread these out a bit. I just don't want them all on top of each other. So our script works to destroy the game object. Before we destroy the game object, because uh, once we destroy this game object, then this script will also disappear. So right before we destroy this game object, we want to instantiate our particle effect. Instantiate is the function to create something in the scene that wasn't there previously. Uh, so we're going to create, uh, and it needs a reference to an object, and here's where we're going to refer to the resources prefab that we made. So the way we do that is with resources.load, and then this string path is where inside of the resources folder. So if you have it in a subfolder, you need to include that subfolder here as well for the path. Uh, but I did not create any subfolders, so I will just use the name of my uh, the name of my prefab, which is effect. So this loads the object. Now we need to decide where to instantiate the object. Uh, so I'm going to give it the position and rotation of the object that this script is attached to once again. So this transform is the object, the transform uh, object of the thing this script is attached to. So transform position is the position where this is at and transform.rotation is the rotation it is at. Um, one option you can do with this sometimes is to actually parent this thing that you're instantiating. But in this case, since we're about to destroy the game object, if we parented it, then it would get destroyed as well. So we don't want to do that. So I'll close that up with the parenthesis and semicolon. And you can see now how that uh, function looks. So we're instantiating the effect prefab, which is in the resources folder. This is how we load it from resources. Uh, then we're instantiating it at the position and rotation of the object that contains this script. So now I will save this and we can test that out. And so now you have an effect, a visual effect and a sound effect playing whenever the user collects these objects. It's also nice to uh, give the player some kind of feedback when they're interacting with something. So in this particular case, when the user hovers over the cube, I want to give them feedback that that's what they are doing. So I'm going to add another function. This one is on 
mouse over. And this is called whenever the mouse is over the object that this script is attached to. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, get component mesh renderer. Uh, mesh render is the thing that has uh, contains the color of the game object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the cube. So get component mesh renderer dot color, uh, sorry, dot material dot color, and I'm going to set it equal to color dot blue. So it's going to turn blue when I hover over it. Uh, and now when I'm not hovering over it, I need to set it back to white. So we have a third function, void on mouse out for when the mouse leaves the game object. And then I'm just going to copy this line here. It's going to be the same line, except we're going to turn it back to white. So on mouse over, get the component mesh renderer, get the material of that mesh renderer and the color and change that to blue. Uh, and then on mouse out, do the same thing, but change that color to white. The component that we are referencing here in this script if you select your cube, you can see here is the mesh renderer component. And under the mesh renderer component is materials. And so this is the material that we are accessing. So now we can test that out. I just realized I made a mistake in this function call. This should not be on mouse out. This should be on mouse exit. Uh, on mouse exit is the function that is called when the mouse leaves an object. So let's try that again. All right, so now when I hover over the objects, they turn blue. And when I move my mouse away, it turns back to white. And if I click on it, then I'm collecting that object and playing its effect. So even though the gameplay here is the same as if I just had the cubes destroy when I click on them, now it's a lot more clear to the player what is happening, and it's a lot more satisfying to do that interaction. Most interactions are more satisfying when they have visual effects and sound effects that accompany them. You can also use these kinds of techniques for things that are existing continuously, not just things that happen once in a while. If you had, for example, uh, characters that were enemies, say, that were running around, having particle effects coming off of them, like dust coming off of their feet, uh, or having like a, a glowing, pulsing outline around them or something, uh, helps draw the player's attention to them. So you can use these types of effects for more than just collecting. Uh, this is just a good base example to start with to get familiar with how to create these kind of effects. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope this is helpful uh, for you when you're creating your games to give better player feedback for your interactions. I'd love if you could sub subscribe to our channel so you can get updates when we release new tutorials. Thanks.